Thank you and good morning. Um, I'm going to take the position that there's really no reason to exclude radiation, not that chemotherapy alone isn't an option, but there's no compelling reason to not include radiation therapy uh, for esophageal and GE junction cancers. And so this is my proposition that chemoradiation therapy is preferred over the other option, which is chemotherapy. And I have made a, a few assumptions. Uh, we're assuming that this is a patient with more advanced stage disease, T2 to T4, uh, can be node negative or node positive, no, no metastatic disease, good performance status, and a candidate for surgery medically, uh, and that surgery is indicated. Uh, I'm not limiting my remarks specifically to adenocarcinoma, but I would note that for many squamous cell carcinomas, there's not a compelling reason to do surgery after chemoradiation therapy. And I think I'm, I've also made the assumption that local regional control is important. If you've uh, had a patient who's had local relapse of esophageal cancer, you would, un, you would uh, agree with me on this. And you really can't cure the patient unless you can eliminate the local regional disease. So this is the ty type of patient that I'm talking about. Here's a large, it's still esophageal cancer. There's the uh, FDG avidity on PET. And here's the cancer extending down to the GE junction. So let's review the evidence for preoperative chemoradiation as a strategy. And we'll just start historically. One of the earlier trials was this uh, IRIS study uh, comparing surgical resection alone to radiation with 5-FU and platinum. It was a small study. They were all adenocarcinoma patients. But they did show uh, an increase in hospital mortality, which was actually quite high in this study, but improved survival at three and five years. And here are the survival curves. That study was criticized because the surgery alone survival curve was so poor here, but here was the multimodality survival curve. Uh, so because of some uncertainty about this trial, the CLGB uh, decided to do a very large study to uh, test this hypothesis and uh, determine whether chemoradiation with radiation, 5-FU, and platinum was better than surgery alone. And unfortunately, this study didn't accrue well, and in fact, it, it closed after only 56 patients. But as it turns out, uh, they didn't really need 500 patients. Because here are the survival curves, really a, a remarkable difference in favor of the trimodality arm with the p-value is shown here. So a, a second study, although very small, but showing evidence that chemoradiation therapy uh, improved survival compared to surgery alone. There was a study done in Australia looking at pre-op chemoradiation, a lower dose of radiation, same two drugs. And what, they did not see a large difference in survival. Uh, they did see a significant difference in local regional relapse. So the local regional relapse by adding just 35 gray was cut in half on this study. And this is the progression-free survival for all of the patients. You can see chemoradiation and surgery, the curves are somewhat separated, but the p-value is not significant. Uh, for squamous cell cancers, the p-value was significant for progression-free survival. Now there's one study that is an outlier, and this is the French study where they uh, treated mostly squamous cell cancers but some adenocarcinomas, 45 gray with platinum and 5-FU. And you see the interesting thing in this study is that at three years the survival was better on, with surgery, by five years it was a little bit better with uh, the chemoradiation arm, and this was the problem. They had an 11% hospital mortality rate. And our treatments are not, really not effective enough to overcome an 11% treatment-related mortality. So you're never going to show a survival benefit in this disease if you have this much toxicity. And interestingly, they did show a significant improvement in local regional relapse, again cut in half from 30% to 15%. And the distant relapse rate was also lower. So they, they improved the endpoints of disease but didn't have a survival benefit. And you can see what happened here is you had too many deaths due to the toxicity of treatment, and then the survival curves actually cross later on. So this is the one outlier trial. And then really the most famous trial at this point is the CROSS trial. Uh, included both squamous cell and adenocarcinoma patients, although it was mostly adenocarcinoma patients, and uh, different chemotherapy, carboplatin and paclitaxel. And the five-year survival was significantly better with this regimen as compared to surgery alone. And you really can't criticize the surgery alone results here because they had a five-year survival of 34% with, with no adjuvant therapy. 
But here are the survival curves, really quite a remarkable difference uh, in favor of chemoradiation therapy and surgery. Now, some have said that this difference is all due to squamous cell results and not due to adenocarcinoma, but that's really not what the study showed. It is true that the squamous cell cancer patients shown here compared to surgery alone had a bigger difference, but the adenocarcinoma patients also had an improvement, uh, and the p-value on that was uh, 0.05. So both adenocarcinoma and squamous cell carcinoma patients had a significant improvement in survival with this regimen. And if we look at local regional relapse, again, it was 34% with surgery alone, only 14% uh, on the chemoradiation arm. They also had a reduction in distant relapse rates. Peritoneal metastases reduced from 14 to 4% and hematologic metastases from 35% to 29% was also significant. So there was a reduction in both local and distant failure with this regimen. And it's also important to note that the relapse rate in the radiation fields is only 5%. It wasn't 30%, it was 5% of patients had a local relapse. And that alone is an important endpoint in this disease. So if we were to summarize this data, that's five randomized trials. Every study that reported local control showed a benefit all of studies except for one show a survival benefit. So I think there's pretty strong evidence that preoperative chemoradiation therapy is a good treatment. Well, let's talk about preop chemotherapy without radiation as a strategy. And I'm not going to be talking about stomach cancer specifically, although there is some overlap, as mentioned, with GE junction cancers. And, and certainly, um, much of the data uh, supporting preop chemotherapy comes from the OAO2 trial which looked at preoperative 5-FU and platinum followed by surgery compared to surgery alone. And there was an improvement in survival with the preoperative chemotherapy strategy, uh, a mix of adenos and squamous cell carcinoma patients. So you can see these are the survival curves with chemotherapy clearly better than the surgery. Not a huge difference, but a statistically significant difference. The problem is almost the exact same study done in the United States both squame and adenocarcinomas, pre-op chemo and 5-FU, although they actually gave more chemotherapy on this study than they did in the OEO2 trial. And in this study, absolutely no difference at all was seen in any endpoint. Uh, local failure was exactly the same, and it's 30% of patients had local failure. Uh, survival was exactly the same. Here are the survival curves. Uh, it's really kind of hard to explain those two results. Use the same two drugs. Uh, preoperatively in both studies. One study was positive, one study absolutely negative. What about direct comparisons of chemotherapy to chemoradiation? And those do exist. Uh, probably the best study is the POET study done by uh, Stahl and colleagues. Uh, they looked at T3 and T4 GE junction, all adenocarcinoma patients, and had a regimen of chemotherapy first and in one arm, they added a modest dose of radiation, 15 gray, over three weeks prior to surgery. And this study did not complete accrual. It had to close early for accrual issues. But these are some of the endpoint differences. Pathologic complete response with chemotherapy alone was 2%, 16% with chemoradiation. Uh, the number of patients who were node negative was 40, uh, about 40% with chemo alone and 64% with chemotherapy and radiation. And three-year survival, 28% chemo alone, 47% chemotherapy and radiation. And why are, why are these endpoints important? Well, this shows you the survival for patients who, after neoadjuvant therapy, have positive nodes here. You can see that there weren't any five-year survivors. These are patients who have node negative disease after neoadjuvant uh, uh, treatment. So the node positive patients after neoadjuvant therapy do very poorly compared to the node negative patients. So that's an important endpoint. And here are the overall survival curves. And I would consider this a positive trial. The p-value was 0.07, so there's a 93% likelihood that this difference is real as compared to a 95%. But I, I think you'd have to consider this overall a positive trial if you look at all of the endpoints. This shows the survival and freedom from local tumor progression here. So they had fewer local relapses. The p-value is 0.06 on the local tumor uh, progression. So if we look at all of these trials, and I've, I've looked at local regional relapse here, you can see in, in the trials that we've reported, it was surgery alone. Uh, 
between 20 and 40 percent of patients will suffer a local regional relapse after surgical resection. If you give chemotherapy as a preoperative strategy, it's not much different. Uh, it's about 20 to 40 percent local regional relapse. If you give chemoradiation prior to surgery, the number of local regional relapses is about half that of what you would observe without using radiation therapy. And th this, this data was already presented and I think is, uh, although somewhat weak, it is in favor of chemo uh, radiation over chemotherapy as a strategy. Uh, this is the uh, uh, original Australian meta-analysis looking at chemotherapy and radiation versus surgery alone, uh, showing that uh, this favors chemoradiation. Uh, when they looked at chemotherapy alone, there was also a benefit, but you can see that the results were very largely driven by the OEO2 trial. In fact, uh, if you took that trial out, I don't think you would have a positive benefit. Here's the, uh, the U.S. trials here. And the hazard ratio for all-cause mortality for preoperative chemoradiation was 0.81. Uh, for chemotherapy, it was 0.9. And in their update, they did compare, and this data was shown, the 12 chemoradiation trials and the seven chemotherapy trials. And I don't know how statistically valid this is, but this is what they did. Uh, the all-cause mortality hazard ratio for chemoradiation versus chemotherapy alone was 0.88. It's so about a 12% reduction in mortality with the addition of radiation. Uh, that p-value was not quite significant. So I think we can conclude that uh, there are numerous phase three trials that show a benefit in either survival or local control or both compared to surgery alone with chemoradiation. The chemotherapy alone trials have mixed results. Uh, in the best direct comparison trial, chemoradiation was better than chemotherapy alone, and the meta-analysis also suggests that there is a slight benefit for chemoradiation better than, uh, rather than chemotherapy alone. And we've heard a lot about the bad weather on the East Coast this winter, but from a, for a Minnesotan, uh, we weren't too impressed because this is a typical winter at my house. This was last year, not this year, but uh, we're sorry about the bad weather here, but it, it could be worse. Thank you.